everyone, and welcome to today's Daily Splat. Now, today, uh, I have a little bit of a topic to talk about. Um, in this last week, uh, from, well, from my position, you're watching the future, this will be possibly way back, um, there were some incidents, uh, if you're a follower of English football, like I am, there have been a few incidents with uh, footballers lately. Uh, namely, uh, Wayne Rooney, who plays for Manchester United, uh, elbowed a uh, Wigan Athletic player, uh, James McCarthy, uh, in the side of the head with his elbow and wasn't sent off for it. Uh, there was also Ashley Cole, who plays for Chelsea, uh, shot somebody at the uh, Chelsea training ground with an air rifle, um, you know, things like that. and. Uh, you know, there's been, it's been a couple of strange stories about footballers behaving badly. Now, that's nothing new, but people have been questioning whether, you know, or if they've been questioning their motives because they're saying, you know, well, these are professional sportsmen, you know, they're role models for the young kids. Kids are going to look at them and think, oh, it's okay to elbow somebody in the head or, or shoot them with an air rifle type thing. And, well, that, that, you see, that's just it. Are sportsmen and sportswomen role models, like, or should they be, I suppose. Um, personally, when I was growing up, I never saw sports people as role models. That said, I wasn't very sporty, you know, I didn't really play, uh, the first team sport I played was field hockey, and that was when I was about 10, and of course, there's not really any great coverage of uh, field hockey uh, over in the UK where I was living at the time. So, you know, I didn't have any sort of hockey role models, I suppose. We were just having fun playing hockey. Um, when I moved over here to Australia, I played, um, you know, like, uh, you know, football for a team, the Junior Love Jacks. We won the league. We were very good. I was very happy to <laughs> play right back. Um, but, you know, um, even though when I was playing then as a right back and, you know, playing in a, a you know, just enjoying football, this would have been 2000 and 2005, 2004, 2005, around about then when I was playing this, and you know, you know, I didn't think, um, you know, I, I, I was, you know, I was well into watching football, you know, obviously I'm a Manchester United fan, and I was watching, you know, uh, this was around the time of the Arsenal Invincibles, uh, United, you know, were won the FA Cup that year, I think, um, you know, Chelsea had just come into their new money, you know, so was, I was watching a lot of football, and I was a young man, but... I never really saw footballers as role models. I mean, I saw them as, you know, heroes of mine, I suppose. Uh, you know, I was a huge fan of the likes of Ruud van Nistelrooy, um, Brian Giggs and Paul Scholes, uh, you know, those sorts of players. Um, you know, Gary Neville, um, in terms of players for other teams, you know, Thierry Henry was a very, you know, was a player I enjoyed watching. Ronaldinho was just starting to take off as a very exciting uh, best footballer in the world type thing. So there were good players around, um, pardon me, but I never really saw them as as role models as such, and I suppose the question, the question a lot of people ask is, are they role models, should they be role models? I mean, certainly, they do have an effect, you know, um, perhaps if I was, say, well, I'll, my brother, for example, played football around the same time as me, but he was about five years younger, so he would have been about eight or nine at the time. And he, Paul Scholes is, was his favourite player, and still is, I imagine. And he, um, you know, he played in central midfield, and he was quite Scholesian, I suppose is the word. Um, you know, he, he, like I said, he could tackle. That was, <laughs> that was the difference. My brother can tackle. And, um, yeah, it was just very, very odd, is all. Um, I oh, lost the point there. Coming back to it. I'm not sure if sportsmen should be role models. Certainly, they should behave, you know. All, all this stuff of, you know, Andy Carroll going out and, you know, getting involved in a fight and going to court, and, you know, Stephen Gerrard beating up a DJ, and Wayne Rooney messing around with uh, women that aren't his wife, you know, things like that are not on, really. Um, and certainly, they shouldn't... They shouldn't do that in the first place. But... Equally, some people say they shouldn't do that because they're role models, and some of their actions on the pitch should reflect that as well. So, 
I see the thing is it, the thing is when you sign up to be a professional footballer, you're not signing up to be a role model. Is what a lot of them would argue. I'm imagining. A lot of them would say, I'm coming to play professional football, make money for myself, and try and win some trophies with whatever team is paying my wages. You know, that's what they do. They tend to be competitive. They tend to want to win by any means necessary. Recently, Robbie Savage, who is a soon-to-be retired footballer. Uh, who currently plays for Derby County in the English Championship, said if, uh, if, the, if, the, if there was a very important game at the end of the season and if you know he scored a goal with his hand that kept Derby County in that division, yeah, stopped them getting relegated, then he would have no problem doing it, which you know, isn't a very you know, role model thing to do because that is cheating. You know, when people talk about, um, you know, Suarez during the World Cup, Luis Suarez, who was a Uruguayan footballer, who um, right at the end of a football match um, between Uruguay and Ghana at the World Cup, um, there was no keeper in the net. Ghana had a shot. Suarez was on the line, and he used his hands to uh, beat it away. Now, he was sent off, and Ghana got given a penalty, which they didn't score, and Uruguay went on to win. Um and some people said, oh, yeah, but, yeah, okay, what he did, you know, he got punished for it and that was all right. You know, it was all done rightly so. But if you, you're not telling me if you played for your team that you wouldn't do that. Well, I'd like to think I wouldn't. In fact, I have an entire season of having played football and having never once tried to stop the ball with my hand. I have been in situations where I've been stood on the line when there's a shot, when the keeper's been beaten. And, you know, I've... There's this thing called your torso, which I've let it hit. You know, I've had to move over very quickly and get in the way and uh, just about keep it out, that sort of thing. Um, but th- that's just it. You I mean, if these if these people, these footballers, are going to dive and are going to cheat and are going to be disrespectful, then should non-football, you know, like parents of young people who want to play football, should they be saying, you know, I'll look up to them, they're all right, you know, or... Should they be better? Should they be? Should they try and teach their children that not all footballers are role models? Not all people in the world are reputable people. This now let me just rectify this. Some footballers are definitely capable of being role models. You know the likes of Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes, uh, Alan Shearer. I'd say was very would would have been an an excellent role model. You know where uh, people who are just you know very professional, they work hard. Very honest footballers, you know, uh, that sort of thing. You know, they are role models. You know, Peter Schmeichel, <laughs> definitely, I'd say, if you're a goalkeeper, you'd be a great role model. You know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, great players, but also nice guys, and they're professional type thing. You know, maybe people should, you know, you know, if they see their children starting to copy Suarez by blocking things online or copying. You know, Ashley Young, and they start diving a lot, or you know, things things of that nature, or they've got, you know, just bad, you know, people doing bad tackles on purpose and things like that. Maybe they should just sit there with the kids and say, look, you don't copy, you know, Maradona handling the ball into the net. You copy players like, um, yeah, just you know, you copy players like Ryan Giggs, and you you know, and Paul Scholes, and you know, those sorts of those professionals who put the hours in work. And David Beckham, that's the one I was forgetting, who put so much time into things like three kicks and his crossing, that actually would cross the ball because he spent absolutely ages doing it and he is another I'd say very very good role model for uh, young footballers um, if this is the case though, if footballers are to be seen as role models personally I think they should be seen as role models only in what they do on the field that's, that's the thing They can't be seen as role models for life because they're young men, often not the most well-educated young men. Some are. Some are very clever, like uh, I think it's Clark Carlisle from Burnley who's uh, quite smart. You know, things like that. Um, You've got to... They've got to be role models, but only on the pitch. You know, they've got to be role models for little Timmy or Jimmy or Sarah or Sally. You know, they've got to be role models for those kids only about football. Because otherwise... It's just not going to go well, because there are very few footballers, I would say, that would be good role models for how to live your life. There are some. I've mentioned them already. You know, Giggs, Gold, Shearer, that sort of thing. But role models for 
the sport role models in all sports, because obviously I could extend this conversation out to AFL and the likes of you know Brendan Fowler and people like that. Um, they should be role models for what they do on the pitch if what they do on the pitch is deserving of being an example to young children. But they shouldn't be role models for children outside of the sporting arena. I've talked for too long now. Thank you all for listening, and I'll speak to you whenever.